Well, the Connected Summit Africa is taking place from the 2nd to the 5th of April 2024. This event is bringing tech thought leaders from around Africa to debate the future of ICT, not only here in Africa, but around the world. This afternoon on Inside Government, we are speaking to Stanley Kamanguya, the Chief Exe Executive Officer of ICT Authority. He's going to explain to us why the change of heart, remember it has always been, Connected Kenya Summit. But now, from now going forward, it's going to be known as Connected Africa Summit. Thank you very much indeed. I uh, want to see you for your time. Uh, you know, for the last 12 years, it, uh, Connected Kenya Summit is what we have known it to be. But now, from now going forward, the name has changed to Connected Africa. What changed? Thank you very much, uh, Brian, and good afternoon to all our viewers. Maybe first, uh, you allow me to take a step back before I speak to the Connected uh, Summit. Mm -hmm. Just to quickly remind uh, our viewers what the ICT Authority really does and uh, what our mandate is. Mm -hmm. So broadly speaking, um, our mandate is to provide uh, digital technology uh, that drives the digital transformation for government on one hand mm -hmm. and uh, connects and empowers our citizens uh, on the other hand to be able to take advantage of the opportunities that are in the digital space. Mm -hmm. So this summit which we have been holding every year for the last uh, 12 years as you've indicated is usually a very high level uh, summit, thought leadership summit that brings together policymakers, implementers, and all other people who are within the ICT sector to, to, to deliberate and, uh, you know, first of all, take stock, uh, stock of uh, the progress that we have made as a country, but also uh, compare notes and uh, share ideas around what are the next steps that we need to take uh, in order to leapfrog our sector and its contribution to our economic growth. Uh, this year, we did have uh, the Connected Summit uh, 2023, which was a huge success. Mm -hmm. We had over 2,000 delegates who attended the summit yeah. in Diani. Mm -hmm. uh, over 70 partners uh, supported this process. And we did have a number of uh, outcomes that we, uh, you know, we deliberated and agreed to follow through. And KBC was the official broadcaster. Oh, yes. And uh, we really thank uh, KBC for the support. Indeed, yeah. uh, they aired, you aired the entire uh, summit live. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, 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 we have been tracking those issues that we agreed mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to implement. And one of them was how now we can scale the summit uh, to a continental level. And the reason why we want to scale the summit to a continental level is because we believe that first, uh, Kenya has a lot to showcase as a country. Mm -hmm. To the rest of Africa. To, and the, to the rest, rest of, of Africa the and to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the last couple of years, the number of innovations that are coming out of Kenya, uh, they are immense. Yeah. The current administration has put uh, the digital superhighway and the digital transformation as one of the, uh, you know, uh, key thematic areas that is going to drive economic growth. Mm -hmm. And from that alone, we have seen an emergence of a lot of um, investors in this area of, uh, of, 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 of ICT. For example, we now have uh, companies that are actually manufacturing fiber optic cable in the country. Mm -hmm. We have one of the best uh, ICT services uh, providers in the, in the region here in Kenya. We also have the global uh, tech companies in Kenya. And we know that uh, scaling this summit to a continental level will provide a huge opportunity for all these players to showcase the products that they're, they're, they're building over time. The other uh, reason why it is important to scale this is uh, we run a program for our youth for innovation. And uh, we are seeing a lot of interest in our youth 
in, in across the sectors to be able to develop new solutions. Mm -hmm. However, we still have a lot of challenges when it comes to making these innovations commercially viable. So we want to expose our innovators to the rest of Africa and to the rest of the world for them uh, to be able to learn what other people are doing, but also uh, expand our framework in terms of what is it that we can do to support uh, our innovators in a, in a, in a, in a better way. Mm -hmm. So we feel that uh, this, this uh, Connected Africa Summit will give us a huge opportunity mm -hmm. to showcase, to attract uh, investors in the, in the, in the, into the country and then also finally, and just riding, uh, um, you know, on the just concluded the Africa Climate Summit. Yeah. We believe as the ICT sector, we have a huge responsibility to also make sure that uh, our sector is not only uh, contributing to a sustainable environment uh, going forward in line with the SDG goals, mm -hmm. but also uh, we need now to take care of, uh, if you like, the mess that we have created in the sector. Yeah. Uh, we have a number of programs which we have already kicked, uh, kicked, kicked out, um, you know, including management of, of e-waste. Mm -hmm. And we want to scale these uh, initiatives, collaborate with other African countries, uh, because we believe that uh, there are so many devices that are out there uh, in Kenya and in the rest of Africa that we then need to see how to uh, manage in a reasonable manner from a waste management perspective. Very good. I mean, you see, when you look at the last two of years um, that Kenya has hosted the Connected uh, Kenya Summit, I mean, the issue has always been how to drive and deepen ICT services here in the country, and so much has been achieved. Uh, so what message will Kenya be taking to Africa? Yeah, so uh, again, thank you, uh, O'Brien, because we cannot talk about uh, a digital transformation without addressing the foundational component of, uh, of digital services. Mm -hmm. Indeed, from where we sit, we have looked at uh, what are the components that we need to bring together yeah. uh, for us to achieve this uh, digital transformation for, for our country. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with the digital infrastructure, which is the most basic uh, component, where we are saying we are increasing the reach of connectivity to people, but not only increasing the reach, also doing it at an affordable cost. Then on uh, the digitization of services, we are saying uh, if you look at uh, the last nine months or so, we as a government have been able to digitize over 10,000 services. In December, we had barely 390 services mm -hmm. on board our e-citizen platform. Now we have crossed the 10,000 mark. And this is changing the way our citizens are able to interact um, with the government because then you can be able to access services and pay for them from the comfort of, of your home or, or, or office. But also um, the issue of uh, efficiency within government, uh, we are now able to serve more people mm -hmm. and we are also increasing the revenue collection. So, and these are homegrown solutions from our Kenyan people, which we believe we can now start to showcase to the rest of Africa. Uh, for, for adoption across other governments. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and of course, and I like the fact that you are bringing in the issue um, of um, uh, uh, offering services through the ICT platforms. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you know, Kenya has managed to onboard about 10,000 services you know, on ICT platform, I mean, it's a sign that it can be done elsewhere. But this is also coming with the risk of attacks. And we saw, uh, I think it was last month, or yes. last month, but one, where you know, Kenya was under attack by various cyber uh, uh, criminals through DTT, D DDTS. Uh, so are we also likely to have a conversation around how to safeguard ICT infrastructure and ICT services in Africa during the conference? Thank you very much. And uh, you know, the issues around um, safety mm -hmm. of, uh, on the online space and uh, cyber security, data privacy, are very central to digitization 
uh, you know, of government. Uh, first, let me clarify and say that, uh, you know, we suffered a number of attempted attacks. Mm -hmm. And these attempted attacks were not only targeted to government systems, they were also targeted to uh, private sector uh, systems. However, you know, because of the measures that we have been able to put in place, we were able to deal with those uh, attacks mm -hmm. and, you know, fully restore all services. And we can confirm at least that uh, there was no data breach, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But from that incident alone, and in fact, from where we sit, we believe it was, uh, it was coming. And that is not the first or the last att attempted attack that we are going to experience. Mm -hmm. More and more attacks are going to come because as we expand the footprint of technology, as we bring people, more people online, then we are also increasing, uh, you know, the surface of attack yeah. and the exposure that uh, then we're exposing our systems and also our people. Mm -hmm. So we have done a number of, th a number of uh, things, uh, you know, to counter that. First of all, um, you know, cyber security is a cross-cutting issue yeah. because uh, it doesn't only touch on systems. It touches also on issues of uh, national security. And uh, what we have done is to come up with uh, a, a multi-sector uh, team, including the private sector. We have a team of uh, 15 partners who we are working with. We are developing uh, proper security frameworks, looking at also uh, our legal and regulatory framework and what we need to do to enhance the issues of data privacy and data security. Yeah. We have rolled out, uh, because again, we say security always begins with you. So we have also rolled out uh, a lot of uh, awareness programs on uh, cyber security in collaboration with, uh, with these partners. And we will continue to do so. We will continue to harden or in improve the security of the system uh, because it is, a, it is an area that uh, keeps emerging. You deploy one preventative measure mm -hmm. and uh, our good, not so good friends, uh, you know, try to get ahead of you uh, with uh, other threats. So it's an area that, you know... And, we, and criminals will always be ahead of the systems. They try as much as to be uh, mm -hmm. ahead of the system, but I think also with the newer technologies which we are deploying around monitoring, using AI and so on, mm -hmm. then at least we are able to see the red flags, uh, you know, uh, early enough. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you see, I mean, when you, when you talk about Kenya and ICT um, and innovation, you, you, you know, Kenya is, you know, of course, miles ahead of, uh, 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 when compared to many other African countries. Yes. And I mean, we pride ourselves as one of the top um, leading ICT destinations in Africa. That's correct. And, and, and so, so how do we plan to bring on board our expertise to help our African brothers, you know, to play catch up so that all of us can move, yeah. you know, as a team? Yes, uh, and I think that's a very, very uh, important point. First of all, if you look at the population of Africa, mm -hmm. about 25% of our population in Africa is young people. Out of the 1.3 billion? Out people. of the 1.3. Now we are just as of the data last year is showing about 1.4 plus billion uh, people. Mm -hmm. And these are people below just about 21 years and below. Now, if you come closer home, the, in the sub-Saharan Africa region, about 75% is below the age of uh, 30 years old. 75%. 75%. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, our population, 60% is between the age of 16 and 24. So we have a multitude of young people who we need to bring together as Africa to see what are the opportunities that these young people can be able to deliver for the, for the country. And therefore, this summit is also going to provide for us a platform to establish a shared ICT agenda for the Africa continent. Because we believe, uh, for example, just that alone, that those numbers I've given alone, is a huge labor market for the world through uh, the digital uh, platforms that we have. Mm -hmm. And we believe that this summit should be able to bring us to the table 
Uh, we are going to be engaging uh, with all the ambassadors, uh, the 54 ambassadors uh, and representatives of various countries, mm -hmm. so that then we see how this summit can be able to help us mm -hmm. to have a shared ICT agenda for, for Africa. And when you look at, uh, for example, Agenda uh, uh, 63, you know, it talks about how Africa can leapfrog um, its development phase, you know, by embracing and deepening ICT. And also when you look at the Africa free, the African free, uh, uh, the African continental free trade area agreement, yeah. it also talks about, you know, how African countries, you know, can leverage on, mm -hmm. I, on, on ICT mm -hmm. to drive growth, e-commerce, and of course to deal with some of the challenges that we deal with here in Africa. And, and so this platform, the, Africa, the, the Connected Africa 2024, these are some of the issues that are going to be discussed there. And... Uh, what kind of outcome are we expecting out of Connected Africa yeah. 2024? So again, without preempting, um, from where we sit and how we see this turning out, we do have a number of expectations and uh, the discussions that we want to drive. Mm -hmm. One of the key areas that we want to be able to drive through this uh, summit of course, is what I've talked about, you know, a shared agenda for, for, for the African uh, continent, mm -hmm. because we believe, uh, you know, together we can be able to position yep. ourselves uh, for the world to take advantage of the numbers and also uh, the skills that we have. Then uh, the second item is that we need to take advantage of uh, artificial intelligence and the other disruptive technologies uh, that, has, uh, that have emerged. We are now talking about how do we use, for example, generative AI to serve our citizens as government. You know, uh, mostly government tends to lag behind in technology, but I think it's for a good reason. Mm -hmm. Because first we allow systems to be tested and uh, mature before we, we, can then, we can then deploy them. Now we are convinced that it's a good time for us to start deploying some of these uh, disruptive technologies, not only to cut cost for government, but also to give our citizens a more experienced, I mean, a more personalized experience when they are dealing with government. So for example, if you want to query about uh, your returns or you want to you know, query about a status of your NHIF or so, or, and, and so forth, you don't need to call. You can quickly go to uh, an intelligent chat and it should be able to give you very realistic feedback. Mm -hmm. So that's one area that we want to, to drive in, in this summit. Uh, of course, the other huge area is what uh, we have uh, spoken around, the contribution that ICT sector has towards uh, you know, uh, a sustainable climate uh, for, for the region. And we do have the technologies that are cross-cutting across uh, all sectors that can help us to move towards, towards uh, those goals. Then the third area is around digital jobs. Because we believe working together, already in our country when we try to map out and we talk to different partners, we are now struggling to upscale the people to be able to do the, the digital jobs. And we are going to be opening up uh, these opportunities. We have already, for example, now uh, established uh, mechanisms to bring on board private uh, uh, institutions to help train our people on digital skills. This year alone, we are targeting five million, uh, five million citizens to be trained so that then you know, these people can start now uptaking these digital jobs. So we believe that we have huge opportunity, first within uh, Kenya and the continent, mm -hmm. but also to serve the rest of the world. So those are the, some of the three key areas which we want to see some solid uh, outcomes from this uh, Connected Summit. Very good. Um, I mean, we're in the company of uh, Stanley Kamangoya. He's the Chief Executive Officer of ICT Authority. He's joining us to help us understand more the switch from Connected um, Kenya Summit to Connected Africa uh, Summit, which is taking place in next year in April. This is the conversation we are having. You're watching Inside Government. We're taking a short break, and thereafter we'll, become, we'll come back uh, to discuss more with uh, Stanley.
ICT is such a big driver of economy, not just here in Kenya, but around the world. And that's why Africa is banking on ICT to drive growth and, of course, to uh, deepen integration. We are in the company of Stanley Kamangoya, the Chief Executive Officer of ICT Authority. He's in studio. We are discussing Connected Africa Summit, which is taking place in uh, the year 2024, which is about how many months from now? We're talking about less than seven months. So if you're planning to go, it's a time for you now to start the registration process. Thank you very much indeed. Let's come back. I mean, you were talking about, you know, leveraging on ICT technology to drive jobs, uh, to deepen integration in Africa. And, and, and so, uh, and Kenya has in the past, you know, been a launching pad of, of, of major innovations. And, and we start out, you know, in the world when it comes to uh, mobile money transactions. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of innovations are we likely to showcase to, to, to our African brothers and sisters? So thank you very much, uh, O'Brien. Um, again, in our um, various components that I spoke to, mm -hmm. um, we do have a number of uh, initiatives that we believe are significant for us to showcase. Mm -hmm. And like you've mentioned, um, this country is a strategic entry point for, for Africa. And that's why you see uh, we are one of the countries which is served with uh, you know, multiple uh, undersea cables. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now at six. Uh, we just got six a seventh one now. Cables. Yes. Oh, we have a seventh one. We, ha we do have a seventh one called there. So now, you know, you can see that uh, from our connectivity to the rest of the world out of Kenya, uh, we, are, we are well covered. And we will continue to enhance uh, and facilitate all investors who want to invest uh, in internet in this country. But as that happens, um, we have also been deliberate in setting up uh, the requisite infrastructure in terms of data centers uh, for regional organizations and global organizations to be able to host their data here in country. And one of the key considerations that they make when they're doing that is the issue of connectivity mm -hmm. because they want a place where internet connectivity is reliable and it is secure. So uh, just recently, uh, the ministry, uh, in collaboration with the private sector, we launched uh, an eco-friendly uh, data center in Naivasha, which we believe will augment the existing uh, data centers in the country and will attract even more companies to be able to come and, uh, and, and, and invest in Kenya from a hosting perspective. So that is one area where we are telling Africa, you know, from a data center infrastructure mm -hmm. and hosting, we can be able to comfortably take care of your needs. Not only for Africa, but also the global organizations that are operating out of Africa can be able to, uh, to host their systems here. And that will also reduce, you know, the issues of uh, uh, data privacy and, and, and the issues that, are, uh, that, uh, that concerns people when data is outside, it's outside the country. Mm -hmm. So that's one area that uh, we believe that we can showcase. Then when you come to, you know, the area of uh, system development, application development, and so on, we have, over the last few years, seen a lot of innovations that are coming from our, from our people. For example, in the education sector, the ICT Authority was running a program called a Digital uh, Literacy Program, DLP program, where we were deploying devices to primary schools, working with the Ministry of Education to develop content and train the teachers. Now, what that has done is that it has evoked a lot of uh, interests in our young people. And now we have a multitude of learning applications. I'm sure if, if you listen to your radio when you're going, you'll hear a few adverts, you know, about some of the solutions that uh, can support the education, the education system. So we have a lot of uh, innovations around 
education. Mm -hmm. We are now seeing also um, the area of uh, devices that are suitable for small kids coming up very well. So those are some of the areas that we think we can showcase. Mm -hmm. We have also made tre tremendous progress in the area of e-health which we believe uh, we can be able to showcase. And I know, uh, you know, the president and the leadership is very keen on the area of uh, universal uh, health care. Uh, we are supporting that drive and we have made a lot of, uh, you know, progress in terms of digitizing the, the, health, the health sector. So that's also another area we believe that, uh, that we, can, we can be able to, to showcase. Mm -hmm. But uh, beyond that, we also want to scale um, our innovators. Uh, because what has been happening is uh, most of our innovations do not get to the commercial uh, stage yeah. of, 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 of uh, you know, commercial viability. So, and we struggle uh, to we receive a lot of applications with people with very good ideas across all sectors, but we are not able to sustain these people through an incubation program because it's also uh, difficult, and also to provide them with the resources that they need to be able to go fully commercial. Yeah. So one of the other area that we want to focus on under this summit as the fourth area is how do we establish uh, probably an innovator's uh, fund that can be utilized by the innovators, mm -hmm. and we get uh, private sector to chip in and fund, and then you know we collaborate with them so that then they can be able to utilize these innovations that are coming from this from this process. Very well, and I, and I like the fact that you're bringing in the issue of you know funding innovators. And when you look at investment in ICT, I mean Africa has the lowest yes. uh, um, uh, investment margins, and you're talking about less than fifteen percent of Africa's GDP, you know, going into, into ICT, ICT investment. And so the other question then comes, you know, so what kind of conversation are we going to have, you know, at the Connected Summit 2024 to ensure that we upscale investment in ICT? Yeah. So again, um, very critical because, you know, for us to achieve the kind of growth that we want to achieve at the speed that we want to achieve, I think it has become evident to all of us that neither government nor private sector can be able to do it alone. And what has been happening is uh, for some time we've been having private sector investing in ICT in, a, in one uh, side and then government investing uh, on the other side. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we have done is to close this gap and you know uh, bring up proper frameworks for collaboration. For example, uh, just to, be, to bring it home, you are aware that uh, we are rolling out uh, fiber optic cable and we are also uh, deploying public Wi-Fi or the hotspots mm -hmm. to the public spaces. Yep. Now, if government was to do all these investments alone, it would cost quite a bit of money. So what we have said let the private sector internet service providers come to us, yep. utilize the infrastructure that the government has laid out, mm -hmm. and then they take it to the people. Mm -hmm. As they do that, they can be able to take advantage of uh, subsidized rates of uh, internet capacity, and then they scale their businesses. And then in exchange, they can help us to deploy uh, the public Wi-Fi. You'll be surprised that uh, in Kenya, we have just about 800,000 uh, homes which are connected to broadband internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. And when we compare ourselves with the people in the power sector, they are approaching 9 million homesteads uh, connected to power. Mm -hmm. So we are saying we have a huge opportunity. And what we have done as government is to open ourselves up, open our infrastructure up to the private sector to come and help us to reach these people the government is only going to invest on the backbone infrastructure, mm -hmm. and then we get the infrastructure closer to, to the people. Then the private sector can pick up that infrastructure and go into the homes and businesses, sell it, but also help us uh, to deploy the public hotspot. So that collaboration uh, will be key 
for us to synergize the investments that are coming from government and also the private sector. The private sector. Yes. And, and so because I can see we're almost coming to the tail end of this conversation, uh, so, so who are you expecting to attend this meeting? Well, uh, normally on a normal connected uh, summit, mm -hmm. we already get a very high level, you know, delegates. And uh, the last couple of years, we've been getting ministers of ICT, ministers of finance, and so on from the East Africa region. Mm -hmm. Now we are scaling this to Africa level. Uh, we do not want to preempt. We are still uh, um, uh, 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 trying to see the right profile for the chief guests, mm -hmm. but I can guarantee you that uh, we have the highest backing, uh, the highest backing. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a different summit because um, over and above the global companies uh, coming here, um, you know, we also want the homegrown solutions to be showcased. So we are going to have a lot of high level delegates from across uh, Africa, mm -hmm. solution providers from across Africa, uh, government and also uh, private sector uh, players. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, and I know that um, you know there are thousands of people who are watching this prog uh, program, if not millions, and they are just wondering. So, how do I participate? How do I become a, a participant in the Connected Summit 2024? Now that um, you know the profile has been raised. Thank you very much. Uh, just last week, uh, our cabinet secretary actually kicked off the planning uh, phase for this Connected Africa Summit. So we have come up with a team mm -hmm. drawn from both government and private sector to plan. We are providing the details on our connected uh, website, connected.go.ke. You can go there. We'll be sending the updates on the venues and the registration when it, when it opens. But we are telling uh, all of us, our partners, and uh, anybody who will be willing to participate, please be on the lookout. This is going to be big for our sector. Mm -hmm. And we want to welcome and encourage everybody to work with us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very good. And we are also looking forward you know, to, to you know, SKBC to be the official broadcaster of this event. Any day, you always do a good job. Because we have always delivered justice to this event. Oh, yes, you do. What else do you want us to know, um, you know before we call it a day? So I think for us, um, we have a mandate as the ICT authority to create an enabling environment for the sector. And we have said it uh, categorically that we are not going to go into competition as government mm -hmm. with the private sector. Yeah. Our work is to enable the private sector for them to be able to thrive in this sector. We believe that uh, with the collaboration of the private sector, we can be able to, unlo to unlock uh, huge ICT enterprises in this country but we cannot do that uh, if everybody is in a competition mode. So we are saying, even as we open ourselves to the private sector, and we are ready and willing to cede control where necessary for us to move and work together. But we're also asking the private sector to adopt uh, the same approach. We are open. You know recently the cabinet secretary also appointed a sector working group to help us uh, review the different uh, laws and regulations that we need to look at mm -hmm. for us then to support a digital economy. But we want to uh, work together to ensure that we have uh, a digital economy that can leapfrog uh, our country in a sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very well. Anything else? Only to welcome uh, uh, KBC and all our viewers. Uh, to the Connected uh, Africa Summit 2024 happening in April next year. We will be sharing the details uh, as and when, you know, the, the plans are, are, are on gear. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so very much indeed, uh, Stanley, for joining us this afternoon. And Thank you. The pleasure was all mine. Very good indeed. Asante. I mean, Stanley Kamangoya is the Chief Executive Officer of uh, the uh, ICT authority joining us on Inside Government so that he can shed more light on the upcoming Connected um, Africa, which is taking place in uh, April 2024, from the 2nd to the 5th of um, April. And this event is going to bring all the thought leaders from around Africa you know, to discuss the future of ICT in Africa and, of course, um, issues around innovation.
And you know what? The Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is and is going to be part of this uh, meeting. So we'll be giving you more details as we go on. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you so very much indeed for your time. You've been watching Inside Garment. We'll see you again on Friday, same time, right here on KBC Channel 1. Until then, have a good afternoon.